Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a first person shooter game in Unity and welcome to episode 4. This tutorial we are going to bring in our player so we're able to move around in the scene and we're also going to take a quick look at some lighting. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well. Stay up to date with every tutorial, still to come in a series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So, first thing we're going to do is bring in something called the standard assets. And you can probably already see it down the bottom there. All the standard assets is, is a great package from Unity to help you build your game without any real in-depth knowledge. Now, the reality is that a lot of people do use these standard assets to gain some intro knowledge to uh, Unity and development. Uh, and creating a really complicated first-person controller is something that would take several tutorials and I don't kind of want to bore people but saying that I want to probably get a bit more advanced later on in the series so we're probably going to change it later on for now we just want the game we want to get the game up and running so we're going to see what we can do so the asset store if you're in unity 2020 or above is no longer available in the engine itself you have to go to the asset store and i will put a link to the standard assets from unity themselves in the pinned comment below so there's going to be probably a couple of links in pinned comment uh, for this video uh, the first one is probably going to be the standard assets all you need to do is download uh, add to your assets and then import it into unity now, to import it into Unity, you may need to go to Window and you may need to go to Package Manager and import from there. You would just locate it here and import it. At the moment, I am offline, so that's why Unity is kicking off at me and having a go. But either way, once you've got standard assets in, you should see this folder here. Now, I, I know there are reports of some people who import the standard assets and get a couple of errors and bugs and stop everything working. Uh, I don't get that error anymore. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if it's just me or if it has been fixed. It's something that I, I don't even know too much about in terms of is it still out there. But either way, I did a video on how to fix the error. So I'll probably link that in the pinned comment below as well. So if you do have an error, check that pinned comment and you'll be able to fix it. Now, we want to bring our character in. So if we go into the folder, go into characters go into first person and then prefabs, you'll see FPS controller and rigid body FPS controller. We want this FPS controller. If you do not have this FPS controller, uh, it may be missing from different versions of the standard assets. I will, again, in the pinned comment, link you to where you can get this exact um, first person controller. Uh, so it's worth noting that you do need the standard assets and this first person controller. You can't have one or the other, but usually the standard assets does come with this first person controller. Uh, you may be able to use this with a, a little bit of know-how, but for now, we're happy with this FPS controller. Let's drag and drop into our scene and you'll instantly see this up here and this highlight in a couple of different ways. So much like any other object, it is surrounded by green frame. You can see, although this is orange, you can just see the green frame here. Same with our crate, you can see the green frame. That is basically, you could think of it as the collider. It stops things from going into each other and breaking. So we just need to make sure that our FPS controller is brought up and above our floor. So let's bring him or her upwards. And we can see, yep, that looks relatively okay. Now, one thing I've always found with the first person controller is if we drill down to the first person character, I've always found the camera to be just a little bit too low on this one. If you want to keep it as it is, that's perfectly fine, but I like to bring it up just a little bit. You can change the field of view on this uh, first person character if you want to. You can change a couple of things. It works exactly the same way as a camera. The FPS controller itself has a couple of different scripts attached to it and you can see over here we won't get into too much detail for this in this tutorial but some of these we will be changing later on things like walk speed, run speed, uh, some sound effects, all different kinds of things you know to really get in depth with development. Like I say we just want to get things working at the moment and have a game we can play. What I'm going to do now is the original main camera I am going to turn that off. So it still exists in the scene, but it's just disabled so it can't be used. 
this first person controller, let's now bring him or her, whatever, it <laughs> over here. And I want to face it the other way. So when we start the game, we're looking that way. So let's do that. Let's bring over here. And let's rotate over here by 180 degrees. So when we start the game, if we press game, we can see that's how we're starting it. So let's press play. And you should hear instantly that thud. Our person is now on the ground and I can look around in the scene with a mouse. Cool. Standard keys, WASD to move, as you would expect. You can hold down shift to run. But basically, we've now got a very, very functional first person controller in our scene. And it works great. It's absolutely fantastic. So I know AAA game developers, they obviously build their own assets, but it, I've really got to stress that for a lot of people who are new to Unity, the standard assets are a blessing. They are absolutely fantastic. I know they do label them as for 2018.4. However, they do work in every version of Unity after that. So there is a long tale and a story to go through with the standard assets, but I'm not going to go through it here. The short version is... They removed them because they were going to make better ones. They never got around to making better ones, so they just put back on the original standard assets, which are these ones. So either way, they are a great addition to the game, especially if you're new to Unity and want to play around. If you've built your own first-person controller um, through a different project or something, you can still use that here. It's still going to function the same way, um, but there's so much to do. So lighting. Lighting is vital. It's a lot like physics. It either makes or breaks a game. So at the moment, we have this directional light. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it off. And you can see not a lot really changes with the scene. And if we press play, yeah, I know it's still playable. We can do all that. But lighting can really have a massive impact. So to illustrate this a little more, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this floor. Hold control, press D. And I'm going to bring it upwards to kind of create a fake roof, you could imagine. So now what I'll do is I'm going to go to Window. I'm going to go to Rendering and Lighting. And I'm going to go to Real-Time Lighting here and tick Real-Time Global Illumination. I'm going to go to Environment. And then I'm going to set the Intensity Multiplier to 0. Let's also remove the Skybox. So... Let's set this up here and let's select none. And you can see everything goes instantly dark. And if we press play, it still looks okay in here, but there is one massive thing to note here. The reason it looks okay is because how we have set up our materials. Now, what I want to do is add light inside this room. So let's go to game object, let's go to light, and let's go to point light. A point light gives you a reference point for light to occur. So if we set this as 0, 0, 0, light will emanate from one given point, which is this right here. So if I bring this up and I increase the uh, range to whatever it would be. You can see just how bright that becomes. But outside, it's just as normal as it was before. Uh, we can also change the color. So let's change it to red. And you can see just how much of an impact that lighting can have. It looks rather seedy now. Uh, shadow type, let's have as soft shadows. Uh, it's not really going to make too much of a difference. You can see an error that's come up here. It says real-time indirect bounce shadowing is not supported for spot and point light. Don't worry about anything like that for now. Uh, you can set the strength of the shadows if you want to. Uh, let's go back to window. Let's go to rendering again and let's go to lighting. And I'm now going to untick real-time global illumination. And I'm going to untick auto generate. If you remember the last time we um, ticked this, I think it was in the very first tutorial. Uh, let's go to environment and let's set the sun source as none. And let's select the environment lighting from skybox to color. And then click on generate lighting. Close. Now we can play around a little bit more with how all of this looks. 
I think it's very dependent on what you want to do with your light. You could theoretically change your point light to a directional light. You're not going to see too much inside then. Reason being is because this directional light is on the outside and you can see just how much it affects the outside. So it's pointing in that direction, which is why you don't see it inside here. Having a spotlight is exactly that. It is a spotlight. So if we were to rotate this downward on the X, you can see there is that spotlight moving in real time. Cool. So let's set that back to zero. Let's set this light back to point and let's set the color to uh, maybe a, gr a slight grayish tint. So you can see just how much that does impact um, the view here. Now, coming back to materials as well, this is where a lot of uh, effects can happen. So if we select our floor and we change our normal map to zero, you can see just how much of an impact that lighting does have. And if we then select our point light and turn it off, you can see it just becomes dull and not very vibrant. So you can see how lighting and things like normal maps on the materials have a real positive effect on how the game can look. So let's undo both of those. There we go. And one thing I want to do to the light is to change the render mode from auto to important. And what that will do is when you have a slightly more complex looking game, it can help light get into the correct places. I think it's just very dependent on how you want your game to look visually. And you can see me moving this light around. It can really have an impact on how the game looks. Like so. So what I would recommend is playing around with the light sources a little bit and seeing what kind of uh, visual impact you can create with lighting yourself. Remember that if you go to window, rendering and lighting, you can play around with some of the settings here. Uh, it's up to you how you want to go through it. A lot of the time you'll find that just changing a couple of things in the environment is probably good enough. Um, for example, if we change the skybox to its original default skybox, which is that one. And real time shadow color can be changed, I guess, if you want. Uh, but you can always undo by holding control, pressing Z. Uh, let's go back to skybox on that one. And the intensity multiplier, if you had it really high and zoom out, it's not going to make too much of a, a difference when you have certain settings in place. I realize that lighting can be very difficult to um, work with. I guess it just depends how you want to work with it. It's like, for example, there, I've turned on the auto generate and because our intensity multiplier is high, you can see how much of an impact that's had right there. And obviously playing around with it is going to have an impact as well. So I'm going to have that set like that. And let's go inside. So everything in here is starting to look somewhat wet because of the lighting that we have in place. So maybe we could play around with the normal maps a little bit and just reduce how they look. I think it's just very dependent on how you want your game to appear visually. Let's have the wall set as one. That's, do you know what? I think I kind of liked it when it was two. Again, it's your game that you're developing here. You take the time to develop it how you want it to look. Honestly, it, you could spend hours upon hours. You see the shadow then for the box falling? That's because the light source is over there. Cool. So I'm happy with how this is starting to look. We can play it. We've got a light in place. Um, it's looking more like a game than it did uh, probably, what, half an hour ago in this series. Um, so next tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to bring in our first weapon and we're going to animate that weapon. It's going to be a lot of fun. So hopefully I will see you in the next tutorial. Thanks very much for watching, guys.